welcome back to Sinews of War. In the previous episode, we lost Guiana to the massive French invasion, which of course we could not stop, but we'd evacuated the province and had an army ready to take it back. So we did sail for Guiana, but before we attacked, we saw action in Europe, where a small army led by Van Veldek laid siege to Paris. The Parisians managed to assassinate Van Veldek and then sallied out for a battle, but our line held firm and the enemy's low morale meant we turned them back most of their army retreating right away so the siege continues. Then Van Nassau landed all the forces we could muster from the Americas, mostly militia, to attack Guiana and the French immediately counterattacked with their professional army. So right now we're in the middle of the battle, it's a terrible day and the enemy has melee advantage which they're using to hammer against our army. Our left flank, our centre left has been demolished and now we're going to try and fight back. Well, I don't care if they riot as long as the flag still flies. Double the watch on loans and I'll pay it all back later, okay? Now off with you. Who's next? Sir, Mr. Lodovix, I have an urgent message from General Van Nassau. Urgent, you say? Oh dear. Come on in then. Here are the papers, sir. Most liberal use of ink and paper, this is. Can you give me the short version? Oh, uh, yes sir. Uh, Nassau has engaged the enemy not far from his point of embarkation. He says they are professional soldiers, bearing the marks of the Paris regiments. Hmm. So they really did play their trump card to Guiana. I hope Van Velde catches wind of this. Continue. The initial skirmishes were bloody. Uh, much of the militia was scattered by the French charges. Uh, Nassau holds his position overnight and will try to put pressure on the enemy in the morning. Very good. But seeing as all this happened days ago, I don't see much use in this information to me. So tell me, do you think he was going to win or not? Hard to say, General. He seemed to uphold some appearance of confidence. Ah, well that means nothing. The man is a rock. He wouldn't break a sweat until a few limbs had been lopped off. He may have already lost by now. But Nassau would not fight until he could give the French a damn good challenge. So they must not have the strength to find us here. No, I think this will all be fine. Carry on, my boy. But uh, what of the men? Uh, what of Guiana? What of them? Uh, yes, of course, I know what you mean. Don't worry. Just a momentary setback. I, I have plans for all contingencies. Now, come on, out you go. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, they're not going to make this easy for us. I won't lose any more Dutch lives over this. Or any more coin, for that matter. So welcome back to the battlefield in Guiana, where the French are giving us a, a few issues here. You can see their lancers mauling some of my line infantry, having charged right down the centre. You'll notice it's in slow motion with no sound effects, because I am playing it at half speed in order to get shots like this, so that I don't have to micro through the chaos. It actually clears up around this point, so I probably should have put it back to normal speed, but unfortunately half of this is going to be in slow motion. You can see here on the right, it's almost a normal line battle there, where we kind of have an advantage. The remnants of the centre are still fighting. I've got my reserves firing into the melee but they themselves are about to be engaged in melee so that's not going to last very long the enemy's auxiliary is just cutting apart my center on the left again it's a line battle where we're sort of winning we have the enemy outflanked there so right on the edges things are going okay now you might also remember I sent my cavalry out to attack the enemy's general. The general is just running away. They chased my cavalry, some lancers, and I'm chasing their lancers with my mounted gun cav, also auxiliary. So there's basically a huge cavalry chase going on at the back of the map, which will eventually be resolved. So for the main fight, I'm going to try and win those line battles on the edges in order to free up more units. While in the middle, we're just buying time by fighting the enemy in melee. Here you can see, of key importance, uh, General Van Nassau actually charged the enemy's lancers with his guards and scared them off. So we've secured a bit more infantry line in the middle to work with. I also had a unit of pikes on my side, which I finally deployed. We're going to start using the enemy's weapon bank against them, using melee troops to just lock down all of these gun troops so that we can readjust our lines to try and gain an advantage. Here you can see an outrageously close range line battle with uh, neither side really killing each other, a testament to how inaccurate these weapons are in the game. 
So with this line battle happening, we are in theory going to win. The only problem is that the enemy's pikemen are just rolling up the flank, coming along from left to right, hitting unit after unit, and there's not much we can do to stop them. There's so many of them still alive. Here you can see their natives are destroying my reserves at the back, and Nassau is actually going to charge in to try and help out with that conflict. Now let's have a little look at the cavalry chase situation. Our cavalry still haven't caught the enemy's general, and my mounted gun cavs still haven't caught the enemy's lancers. So we're still going. The enemy's lancers are faster than my cavs, so they have caught up, but their general is about the same speed. We're going to basically be chasing to the edge of the map there. So now a tiny bit later, you can see Nassau is hacking away at the enemy's auxiliaries in Malay, super dangerous, trying to aid his own troops. We've killed about half of those auxiliaries at this point and their morale is starting to lower. It's getting to the point where if we shot them enough, they might just leave because they are uh, easily morale shocked by gunfire. Meanwhile, my pikemen are successfully driving the enemy back on my right flank. They defeated a unit of militia and are now going to move against line infantry. That will free my line infantry up to fire at the enemy's pikemen who are also moving up my line. So <laughs> pikemen basically dictating the battle here. I do have troops behind the enemy's lines, but they're not doing very much good because only ranged troops and it's a terrible day for firing. On that left flank, the battle is still going. It's three against one, but we can't defeat that enemy unit. We just don't have enough firepower. Our cavalry have still not caught the enemy's general, he's continuing to escape. And here you can see my auxiliaries have uh, fall behind, fell behind, sorry, because I had them on skirmish mode. And they encountered the enemy's artillery and wouldn't run past them because they're on skirmish mode. A massive mistake, so they're going to arrive very late to that party. Nassau gets out of the battle with the auxiliaries alive, which is good news. But the bad news is the pikes have just finished off another unit and are about to hit the end of my right flank. We've got gunmen behind them though, so we're going to try and get fire on those pikes. The entire time they're in melee, they are, just like the native auxiliaries, vulnerable to the morale shocks of being under small arms fire. So all the units we can are going to fire on the pikes, while my own pikes just keep all of the enemy's gunmen busy. Back at the cavalry engagement, the enemy's lancers have unfortunately caught up with me, and the enemy's general escapes the melee. I'm ordering my men to try and leave the melee and go after the general. We still haven't managed to kill him. My auxiliaries are totally caught up on the artillery which means they are really not involved in the conflict, but the good news is they actually did defeat those artillery, so that's something, although they weren't actually firing at this point in the battle. So jumping back to the main fight, we have some extremely good news. The enemy's pikes finally rout. You can see I kept falling back and kept firing at them, trying to keep them out of melee, and we finally get that unit to rout. My own pikes are routing enemy line infantry as well. Suddenly the right flank is starting to turn, and we're going to continue to put pressure on those units because they're, they have a lot of strength, so they will come back from routing if we don't really hammer them at this point. Nassau having fun as well, fighting with the enemy's auxiliaries, losing yet more men. Once again, he manages to escape with his life, having defeated many of the enemy. It's a quick volley will finish off those auxiliaries at this point because it's lost so many men. The left flank still going, still haven't defeated the enemy on the left flank and the enemy actually now uh, coming back with two more units of line infantry there so we don't have the advantage anymore but because things are starting to clear up in the center we might be able to turn this. Enemy routing units coming back in the center will mean I need to fight on both sides because the enemy are both behind my lines and in front of my lines. So we're going to form up in such a way to try and hold the enemy from multiple directions. And Nassau and his troops nearby are just slaughtering the enemy's routing troops. And that's really turning the battle at this point. Without those troops, we actually have the advantage in terms of uh, forming up for a line battle and we have the formation advantage. We're going to surround the enemy and now he might be able to turn the entire battle. Get off me. It isn't going to bleed that much. We need to get back to the men. Look as dour as you want about the comrades you have lost. But think about the other regiments for a damn second. You've lost two score of your unit. One of those who just saw 200 fall in the blink of an eye. Don't they deserve some bloody sympathy? Don't they need soldiers like us at their backs to show them how to get through this? Come on. No more close order moves. The men's nerve will not hold. We still have the numbers on our side. We'll surround them and shoot them from all angles. Stop the enemy from focusing. Let them see just how few they are and how their allies cannot save them. If we can hold out just a little, I'm sure they'll surrender. So now we've basically won on the right flank and folded the right flank around to replace our left flank where everyone's dead. So now it's basically our reserves and the right flank fighting against the enemy's remaining forces. 
We've got all these units positioned behind walls who are behind the enemy. This is the ideal position. We should be wiping them out, but unfortunately, most of our men weren't actually firing. I think there is an issue with being behind a wall when you have misfires. I think uh, when you're standing in a line, if a man misfires, he attempts to fire again. When you're behind a wall, if they misfire, they just sit there and go, well, that's the end of that. So unfortunately, my men were just sitting there for the most part. Now with that cavalry engagement, my provincial cavalry were lost and the enemy's cav then came to engage with my mounted auxiliaries, but they were winning in melee, so I was willing to let that continue. So here's my men again, not doing all that much, most of the men just sitting there, some of the men pointing their guns over the wall but not firing them and then just sitting back down again. Overall completely useless, two units not doing anything despite being in an ideal position. Really disappointing to see this. Luckily we have enough fight on the enemy already that we are starting to reduce their numbers. Their routing units were coming back though and they would have rear attacked me but I sent out my other auxiliaries, my irregulars, to go and fight them in melee and the enemy were pretty shocked by this and turned around. The enemy's general there has come into melee attacking me in the rear but I'm fine with that because it's a chance to kill the enemy's general no matter how many losses we take and for the enemy's main body of infantry i have charged in my pikemen to do some nice work we're gonna have one unit being attacked by the pikes the other unit we're gonna focus on with all of the gunfire we have available only a few units with a decent amount of men left to try and fire but it's more than the enemy have at this point. We are on the verge of victory and to make things even better, the enemy's general is killed in this struggle, so that's fantastic. They killed a whole bunch of my line infantry here, but they weren't doing anything as we saw, just sitting behind that wall, so not all that much of a problem. So essentially the battle is now won and you can see I was spending my time looking at my units at the back there and noticing that the auxiliaries have very nice uh, India Company coat song, which was a nice touch I think for their unit design but anyway eventually those units in the center did surrender and the rest of the enemy's routing units didn't come back so the battle ends in what the game calls a heroic victory I think that's very generous have a look at these battle results both sides pretty much took equal losses gives us the advantage because we were losing militia losing men easier to replace but if that's a victory it's a close victory <laughs> by most accounts so both sides took heavy damage and as we can see here on the uh, statistics it was the pikemen leading the way getting the most kills so yet again pikemen proving their power and our auxiliaries coming in second there so our professional infantry the main body of our army just doesn't perform in comparison to uh, these more basic units it seems it's Perhaps it's just because this is the early game. Once we get fire by rank, I'm hoping to see that turn around, but we'll see. Anyway, the France survivors fall back to the settlement as expected. So we're going to be able to pursue them here in the next turn. Some pirates have shown up. It's a brig happy delivery to blockade the port that Nassau is stationed in, but uh, that doesn't matter. Now, interestingly, we have an election. Because we are a democracy, the people running our country will be constantly switched around to new people, which changes the bonuses being given to our faction. Luckily, we get a pretty good set of people who all provide positive bonuses for the most part, so hopefully nothing's going to go wrong as a result of this new government. Now, at the Siege of Paris, I'm going to sink loads of money into that army in order to build it back up to full strength. That way, since the French can't replenish inside their settlement, we'll be gaining a nice advantage there, maybe even getting to the point where we can just storm the city. Now some other good news, we've researched the plug bayonet, so no more completely awful performances in melee for our regular line inventory. We've got three universities heavily researching away here, and of course we're going to go straight for the socket bayonet next, far superior to the plug. We're also researching this physiocracy which increases our trade income, so I'm hoping, hoping sorry, that once that gets done we'll see a nice boost in income. I'm also researching canister shot for our cannons to make them more useful at close range, because we've had a lot of close range engagements with cannons recently. So now with Nassau's arm, I consolidated a bit, decide which units are worth spending money replenishing because we don't have enough money to replenish the whole army, and we go to a besiege Dutch, Dutch Garnier, sorry. We have an advantage, the enemy won't surrender though, so we're going to besiege them for now and start building up more troops through the replenishment. And I'm also going to move, merge some of the units together since we probably aren't going to maintain this many units, especially that many militia units after this war is over, so we don't need to try and keep all of the separate regiments alive, we can just combine them. And Calumbra is going to come down to take out these pirates. I mean, right now we're actually doing France a favour because they are technically besieging a French port, but we're going to take it in a second, so I thought I might as well just get rid of these guys. And it gives some nice traits for Calumbra, levelling him up and making him better at attacking at sea, which is going to be absolutely perfect. You can see his fleet's getting pretty big now. It's actually mostly small ships, but still, that would do a decent amount of damage to any enemy fleet it comes across. 
I'm also going to reinforce there in France, sending a small detachment of troops to go and join the Siege of Paris. They'll get there next turn to make us even more powerful. And of course, we can attack the French ports once again. They keep repairing them, so by doing this, we're just draining uh, the French economy. It's going to cost them probably like a thousand a turn doing this, so all very handy, and it costs me nothing to do it. Now, in the next turn, we learned there's been a strike in the Leeward Islands. I think this is because from the election in the last turn, it slightly changed the public order bonuses we're getting around the place, and it happens to have slightly knocked things off. You can see the upper classes aren't particularly happy right now, which is a strange thing to see. So hopefully that'll just calm down and we won't do anything about it particularly. Here in Madagascar, I'm just showing that as a reminder of what's going on. Basically nothing. Our fleets there still control Madagascar, and I'm slowly repairing all the ships and building them up while this war against France is going on, but they're not really taking any part in uh, the campaign right now. So back with Nassau, I decided I might as well actually make an assault here on Guiana. I could wait another turn and uh, siege them out and get them to surrender, but I was worried that the French settlement to the east would be building up another army, so I want to storm over there and bring the war to their province as soon as possible. So we're just going to attack. We have an advantage and we have more cannons than the enemy, way more cannons than the enemy. So we can just pound them into submission and storm the settlement. Genoeg met deze ons in dat grote bedrijf hun plichten kunnen omzeilen. Het moet er staan om groter te worden, maar de staat wordt er niet beter van. Ik wil dat de tarieven op alle goederen gelijk zijn voor alle bedrijven. Is dat begrepen? We worden waarschijnlijk overweldigd door brieven met eisen van de directeuren, maar met het inkomen van genoemde tarieven kunnen we vast wel iemand inhuren om daar wat aan te doen. Ik snap gewoon niet waarom niemand het eerder heeft gedaan. Ik denk dat we hier genoeg aan gaan verdienen. Ach, het laaghangende fruit zal van mij zijn, zo lijkt het erop. De koopelui mogen zelf de details uitkippelen, maar aan het eind van de dag is het zo. Als ze niet betalen, is er geen enkele Nederlandse poort voor hun open. For this battle, we're going to be able to use the battle replay because, by the grace of the Matrix, it actually happened to work in this particular case. So, we'll get some more interesting footage. The start of the battle was easy. All I had to do was set up my artillery on a hill just outside the town and start firing randomly into it, hoping to hit some of the enemy's men. There weren't very many of the enemy, and because those guns are very inaccurate, they're pretty unlikely to actually hit anything, so soon I realized I'd need to move in closer. It's a terrible day, as you can see, so a bad day for a gunfight on Unfortunately, which will make my life a little bit harder, I think. The enemy had one artillery piece themselves, but they've got it really blocked in. They put up artillery defences and then deployed next to them rather than in them, slightly awkwardly. So they really have a limited line of sight. They can't see any of my army right now, so that's all fine. They also have these light infantry, a potential worry because they outrange my men, but all of these guys are just going to go inside this building on the edge of town. Now I thought I might be able to use my artillery to fire at that building, and I did experiment with that in the battle, but uh, those artillery are so inaccurate they can't reliably hit even a building, and I realised it basically wasn't going to happen, so we just left them in there. So my main army moved up onto a hill closer to the town, the final hill before I went into the town itself, and the enemy actually came out and started wandering around on the road, and I was able to start taking pot shots at them. Here you can see a unit of militia forming up in front of me. I'm just on the hill above it, and I've got two or three units up there who can all see this unit and are able to fire down. So if the enemy want to form up with this one squad of militia for a gunfight, that's fine by me, because I have far more guns and many of my troops are actual line infantry who are more accurate, especially because we're fighting at our maximum range. The enemy's low accuracy means I'm unlikely to take many casualties. They're also taking ages to start firing because they haven't finished forming up yet. Some of their men were delayed coming out of the town, meaning they're just dropping as they stand their morale dropping as well. So we are surrounding that one unit here as you can see which is a little bit dangerous on the right because the rest of the enemy's army is coming out of the town here on the southern part of the map so as I curve my right flank around I'll be vulnerable to being outflanked by the rest of their army but I'm going to do it for now anyway just to maximize fire on this unit which as you can see is now firing back at my main position. We are going to take losses but it will be nothing compared to what the enemy take. My men are going to bombard them and you can see they are experiencing misfires but uh, unlike the last battle they fire again after checking their weapons so we're actually going to be firing unlike their performance previously. 
I moved up the guns to be closer, putting them on this same hill just behind my line. My plan was to fire right over the top at that isolated unit of militia, but actually just as I set the guns up, those guys started routing and fell back into the town. Still lots of men left, they're going to come back from routing soon, so it's just an opportunity to reform now basically, since we don't have to fire at them, we can look at the rest of the enemy's army and decide what to do. I mainly needed to fold back around slightly on my right flank here, you can see I've got these guys in hiding, watching the enemy approach as they come towards me. They turned in to attack my centre a little bit, so it wasn't too bad. Meanwhile on the extreme left, I'm sort of sneaking into the town, I've got some militia firing on the enemy's light infantry in the building, but there's almost no chance of actually hitting them, so that was doing nothing really. So here comes the main body, coming up towards my right flank and you can see I'm uh, swinging back, moving the centre over towards the right so that we're trying to make the enemy come in towards our vague centre by basically moving around. That was slightly disrupted by that militia unit coming back from routing, but after my new centre position fired a volley towards the town, they turned and ran once again. So now the enemy deployed their shock unit is the survivors of the Pike Regiment from the last battle, still 200 of them now charging up the hill towards my line. Now I wasn't going to let this go the same way the previous battle went, I told my men to just run. Obviously they can't skirmish, so I'm going to have to do this manually using micro, which is inconvenient, so I'm going to spend half my time just making sure we're still running away from the pikes and that they haven't changed direction or gone after a different unit. I had to fall back with these irregulars as well, because the pikes driving my men away meant my right flank had basically collapsed entirely. So I wasn't going to contest it anymore, we're just going to run away completely while the centre and left fold around to form a new line with the town protecting its left flank and the enemy downhill from them. Still a pretty nice position where we can fire on the enemy's professional infantry. All of their units are quite small, they're all survivor units rather than full ones, so it should be relatively easy to kill them. He can see I've actually snuck a unit around right to the other side of the enemy. They're sort of fighting both on their front and back now, which is ideal for me. So while we're shooting at them, I have so many free units, I can even afford to just get this militia unit, tell them to put in their new plug bayonets to make them effective in melee, and then charge this unit of line infantry. Line infantry are normally better than militia in uh, MLA, of course, but I thought with the plug bayonets, we should be able to overcome them, plus we have the numbers. So we swamp them, and fortunately, their captain was among these men, and we kill him quite rapidly, so that's going to be a hit to, to the enemy's morale. Now, as for the pikemen, I eventually was coming up to the red line of death, so I couldn't run any further. I told all these men to put in their plug bayonets as well and charge into battle. Now that they're plugged up, they won't be able to fire, but hopefully they won't need to. The rest of my men have the rest of the battle covered. You can see I've got a few pikemen of my own who I was trying to get into the melee, but it seems they actually stopped before they reached it and I didn't notice. So the pikemen weren't actually fighting the enemy's pikes, which would have been ideal. But luckily for me, the enemy are low on morale at this point and are totally surrounded by my troops. So their morale breaks before I have to go through the very difficult process of actually killing them all and their unit is annihilated as it attempts to rout. You can also see there on the left that message is because I captured that building from the light infantry using some militia again charging in with plug bayonets. So the enemy's surviving gun troops, here you can see a full squad of militia that came in right at the end of the battle. They just run away because we had them totally surrounded by the end of the battle. They didn't really fight, and the battle comes to an end. It's a victory, we killed about four times as many as we lost, fantastic news, and of course, we've taken Guiana back for ourselves. This time, not the pikes doing all the work, a more traditional result where line infantry are getting the kills. A much more cautious battle and a nice result. I got the news in yesterday. It's simply part of the pattern of things, isn't it? I mean, any sane man could have predicted the West India Company would fall, but even I did not think it would be quite so fast. Quite a remarkable display of poor judgement and incompetence. Rather fantastic. As the West falls, the East rises, gentlemen. If that French army can take all of the new colonies and finally pin down Calimber, devil of the sea as they used to say, then we fellows who have worked so hard to make the East Indies a bastion of stability will be the heroes. When most every crate that passes to Amsterdam is courtesy of Governor Grotius, the name is bound to finally stick. 
So with that, the settlement is ours once again. I can't afford to actually repair the damage done to it, nor to its ports. But right now, the settlement is really good in terms of public order, which is great, because that means the army doesn't have to stay in the settlement, which is what I'm counting on. My income's also back up a fair bit, because this is a very valuable settlement. What I want to do is move on. You can see the French already have forces amassing on the border, and a few more that look like they're being recruited by the settlement. So what I want to do is just press onward. You can see the settlement's over okay with me moving the whole army out so we're going to hit this army on the border here it's smaller than me so i'm hoping we can overcome this relatively easily of course my army really needs to replenish it really needs the rest it's just been constantly fighting but we have to press our advantage against the french and try to destroy them before they have any chance to recover because i think the fact i don't really have much money means they may be able to recover faster than me the enemy army has the dreaded auxiliaries in it, bowmen and axemen, quite inconvenient. They also have two generals in there, curiously. But we have the slight advantage on the balance bar and we have cannons on our side. Now, thanks to the replay god, once again, we'll have the battle replay for this one. I started off by sitting on a hill in my deployment zone with the cannons right out in front, able to just fire in the general direction of the enemy as usual. Almost no chance of hitting anything, but it at least might provoke them to come towards me and fight me on the hill. They never did fix that animation <laughs> of them scrubbing the guns, they still don't actually put them in the barrel, but oh well. So here's the enemy army. All we can see right now is two squads of militia and their two generals. They've got cavalry defences behind them, implying they've just moved forwards. I'm firing to begin with with the cannons at their general. I managed to actually kill a couple of the guards in one unit, the other unit just standing steadfast against the fire. We're pretty much not going to hit them. So I eventually ended up moving my army slightly across on the hill I was on to get a better line of sight and be slightly closer to the enemy. So while I was setting up my new formation, the enemy were making a sneaky move that at the time I didn't really notice until the last second. Their secondary general is coming around onto my left flank. My militia luckily were paying attention, so they managed to fire off a few shots at the enemy, and this suddenly prompts them to turn and charge that unit. So they're charging into my line. They change their direction of charge at the last second to go further along the line, which is great, meaning we'll get more shots on them, but we don't really do any significant damage. They successfully make this charge and slam into this squad of militia. I order the militia to plug their bayonets and we're going to fight in melee with their general. I'm quite happy to let this happen. My militia will take heavy cash in this engagement but we have an opportunity to kill this heavy cavalry unit with uh, just overwhelming numbers we can surround and destroy it something that will be much more difficult later in the battle so we might as well try i've got a couple of provincial cavalry who i can charge into help they'll be more evenly matched against the enemy's horsemen my mounted auxiliaries come in close fire a volley at the enemy's horsemen hopefully firing over the top of my own men and then they draw out axes and charge into the melee themselves these guys are surprisingly good in melee for a skirmish unit but Basically any native unit is good in melee, no matter what their intended role is. So we now have the enemy general pretty surrounded and we're going to complete the surrounding by rushing in another unit. These guys haven't plugged their bayonets, I'm not intending to have them do the killing. They're just going to inflict a morale shock by surrounding these men. Of course I don't want to plug them because I want these line infantry to take part in line battling later in the fight. So now some of the other militia do some point blank range fire taking out more of the enemy most of the enemy general's unit is dead the general himself is probably dead at this point but he's only the secondary general so it won't tell me when he dies and of course it doesn't give that morale shock to the enemy for losing him but of course we've taken out a very valuable unit that's a powerful heavy cavalry unit and it costs the french a thousand plus to recruit another general so that was a nice little exchange a nice early skirmish now it's the rest of the fight and the dreaded auxiliary to overcome We'll see how I do in the next episode. The campaign of General van der Sau through Guiana brought about a complete reversal in the French progress in South America. In a methodical and bloody advance, he battled the French main force to a rough stalemate, although he won the field of the day and won the ability to march all the way to Paramaribo, the capital of the region. Attacking as soon as he arrived, the French were disturbed by how the losses taken by the Dutch were not curtailing their aggression or speed. This was mostly down to the belligerent spirit of van der Sau himself, driving his men on with displays of courage and patriotism. His troops were moved to trudge ever faster through the winter storms and fight ever harder in the skirmishes against the professional French soldiers.
thanks for watching. We'll finish that battle and try to deal a killing blow against France in the next episode of Sinews of War.